Welcome back to Corner Stories. Please enjoy the stories of the day. First story. I intern in an office where I assist associates on their projects. There are other interns besides myself. I've enjoyed working here until a new associate, we'll call her N.A., joined the office. She seemed very friendly and sometimes hung out with us interns after work. However, she became too personable at work that it encouraged my co-interns to be less productive. As time went on, she began gossiping about other associates, which made me wonder if she also gossiped behind my back. A few weeks later, N.A. and I had a work-related argument one day, and we spoke about it in her office in private. I found out the next day from a co-intern, co-number one, that N.A. told him very specific details about our conversation. This frustrated me because N.A. and I had agreed to keep our discussion private. I called N.A. out on this the following day and she denied it, claiming, he must have overheard. The last straw happened a few weeks after this when one of my co-interns, co-number two, did not complete her daily tasks because she spent the day with N.A. in her office talking about her personal life, leaving co-number two's tasks to fall onto me. I spoke with the office manager about it and N.A. overheard it. The next day, N.A. told co-number two, behind my back, that I was talking shit about her to the office manager. At this point I decided I didn't want to assist N.A. with her projects because of her tendency to gossip about others while expecting the interns to view her as a supervisor. I spoke with another associate who has seniority over N.A., and he agreed to assign me more of his projects in place of N.A.'s. I then went to N.A.'s office to tell her I wouldn't be helping her anymore. She angrily stated she was the supervisor and that I had to listen to her. I responded that she doesn't act like a supervisor by gossiping about co-workers behind their backs and refusing to own up to it when she's called out on it. During this argument she interrupted me, refused to acknowledge my perspective, and even claimed that she had done nothing wrong. By now it felt pointless to try to resolve this any further. We both left the argument angry, and since then I've set my boundaries by refusing to speak with her if unnecessary. I don't greet her or acknowledge her presence. If either of the office owners ever assign me a task that would require me to speak with her, then I will keep it short, but this is yet to happen. I've been much happier since I've not been interacting with her. I still assist other associates with their projects. I sometimes feel bad when I notice her briefly glance over at me from the corner of my eye and I can see that she's visibly hurt. I don't get any joy from seeing her upset, but I just can't bring myself to interact with someone who continually stabs me in the back and denies any wrongdoing. Story 2 so my wife and I work for the same multinational company but in different departments at the same location. Like most couples we talk about work, complain about co-workers, and workplace drama. I work in a quality control lab, and she handles clients and rubs elbows with the top brass of the company during their weekly meetings and such. She is also a very likable person and friends with them outside of work. I was complaining to her about my co-workers, how some of them don't run quality control checks, or ignore them if they fail and how some of the falsify or completely make up data just to make their job easier. At my company any of those things are a fireable offense. I also mentioned to her that I had complained about it to people overseeing the lab, but nothing ever comes of it. Well, today after her morning meeting, she was commiserating with her team, like I said some of them are the top brass in the company, and some of what I told her about the lab came up, I can't imagine how it came up but it did and apparently it didn't seem like it was a big deal in the moment. Near the end of the day, she was called by HR to schedule a meeting with HR and the company legal team. They are flying the legal team from our company HQ to our location for a meeting to discuss any information she knows about the lab practices I mentioned to her. I'm sweating bullets because I have no idea what this means for us. In the end I know I will be mentioned so I am going to take heat from someone, and I'm totally worried somebody, maybe me, will be fired. Relevant comments are you the one falsifying data? No? Then I doubt you'll be fired. If you reported it to higher ups, I would start documenting what you said to who and when you said it. If you have it written in email form, send those emails to your personal email address and save them as if your job depended on it. Because it might. OP I'm a bit worried about retaliation for being the one to say something. I definitely don't falsify results life has unexpected consequences. If you aren't one fudging numbers and what not, you should be fine. Everyone complains to their spouse about work stuff, and rightfully so if your supervisors were made aware of liability issues and did nothing. Play dumb and hope nobody that knows finds this. OP I've made my supervisors aware, but nothing ever came of it. I'm more worried about retaliation, because eventually someone always finds out. The whole situation wasn't my intent but it's out of my hand now. 
Update it turns out that multiple people had reported the anonymous hotline for our company, the legal team met with my wife because she was the only person they knew had knowledge of the events. One month later, we both still have our jobs, no retaliation, which was my biggest fear, but nothing has changed. The people falsifying data are still employed, and continuing their same practices. As mentioned previously we are an international company, HQ in the US, but are managed locally for the most part. One comment asked if I worked at Boeing, which gave me endless laughter considering the headlines that month. We don't ha, huh, however, we do work in an industry where people can be seriously harmed if the lab gives inaccurate results. I think the local upper management is keeping a lid on things because we are short-staffed and reluctant to fire skilled personnel. So I'm reporting infractions to my supervisor and documenting each incident, and I plan to turn it over to HQ if nothing changes in the next week. We both kept our jobs, but so did the people signing off on false data. Relevant comments Siren Scalor so what you're saying is we all need to avoid at all costs so we are not seriously harmed. Thanks for the heads up. OP more along the lines that lower level employees that are in direct contact with the materials could be harmed due to poor lab testing. But if a truck had an accident or say a railcar went off the tracks you would need accurate chemical information to protect the population and environment. Edit, the average person wouldn't normally be affected. Look into whistleblower protections, I believe your employment can be protected and a percentage of a potential government fine awarded to you OP I'll look into that. Last month I was worried about my job, but now it has become so egregious that I'd rather work in a research labs making a fraction. Someone else said contact the FBI, I thought it was silly at first, but maybe it's actually warranted. It doesn't necessarily need to be the FBI I don't think, just whatever regulatory agency would oversee the industry. FDA, maybe even OSHA, etc. Just say where you work man, you want the world to know, that's why you're posting on Reddit. Story 3. So first off, I find my wife as beautiful, or even more beautiful than the day I met her. Her smile lights up my day, I could get lost in her eyes, and I cherish every inch of her. That being said, even with ample communication, and doing our best to stay intimate, we have hit a small rut in our relationship. You see, my wife and I own a restaurant together for the last few years. It's a busy spot that definitely takes up most of our attention and energy throughout the day. This has led to both of us feeling tired, gross, and generally just over the day when we walk back in the door. This has slowly been creating feelings for my wife of not feeling pretty or desirable enough. Despite my best efforts, and compliments her vision of herself in the mirror has been fading from stunning beauty to tired and greasy unfortunately. That is until a couple months back a random customer left a note on our customer chalkboard that she was hot. It's like a fire reignited in my wife for just a moment that day. Her eyes were sparkling, she had a lighter step in her foot, and I definitely heard her talking to the other servers about how it felt so good to receive that compliment. Well folks, call me crazy but I missed seeing my wife with those butterflies of, oh, who thinks I'm attractive? So what have I started doing over the course of this last month? Practicing a different writing style and leaving notes to her once a week or so, and she's been eating it up when she sees them. I love hearing her tell me about her new little note on the board, and how everyone is trying to figure out which regular it is. How I've seen her smile more in this last month, than the last year. How she now comes home with confidence and wants to dress in pretty dresses for me, and be extra lovey. Is it gaslighting? Kinda. I do feel like I've gone too deep a little, like how long can I keep the charade up for? Will I ever tell her? Or will she finally catch on that her new admirer is just her husband leaving her a second set of love notes in blocky handwriting? Story 4. Myself and a group of six of us at work are almost certain our coworker is recording us in the bathroom with his phone. Our work bathroom has two stalls, one much bigger stall and a smaller stall right next to it. My first month into my job I went into the big stall to use the bathroom. While I was in there a person entered the small stall next to me. Once they sat down I glanced over and noticed their phone was in their pocket, positioned in a way where, if it was recording, it would have a full view of me in the stall. I was weirded out by this and quickly left. I thought nothing of it until a few months later I was chatting with some of my office friend and they all had similar experiences. One guy, after it happened to him three or so times, waited outside the bathroom to confirm who it was. Now we all know who it is and have his shoes memorized so we can recognize them if he sits down in the stall next to us again. The most recent occurrence was the most telling. I recently got my friend on board and told him all about the guy who is probably recording us and told him what to look out for. 
A week into the job the recording co-worker added my friend on our office Skype, presumably to see when his status was away, which means you are either in a meeting or in the bathroom. This was especially weird because these two have never had an interaction before. This put my friend on alert and that day when he went to use the bathroom he heard someone enter the small stall and, you guessed it, he recognized the shoes immediately and saw the phone positioned in the guy in the small stall's pants in the perfect position to record. I would maybe be willing to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he just puts his phone in his pocket and stares at the stall door. Maybe it just happens to be sticking out of his pocket with the camera lens fully visible. I would maybe see that side of things except that my other co-worker made eye contact with him, once. He was peeing in the small stall and the co-worker we believe is recording us stood at the urinal closest to small stall. There is a gap between the wall of the stall and urinal, and the wall is made of tile. The tile has a ton of reflection it's almost like a mirror. My co-worker in the small stall glanced to his right and saw the reflection of a face pressed against the wall. My co-worker in the small stall then leaned forward and put his face against the wall and they made eye contact for a second. The guy is a creep. What the hell do we do about this? I can't 100% say his phone is recording when it is in his pants around his ankles, but there are too many of us with accounts of this. He just happens to have his phone in the perfect position to record and he just twiddles his thumbs? I don't buy it. The coworker we think is recording us knows that there is no way we can prove he is recording, and he has never been caught so he keeps doing it. It makes work very uncomfortable. Can we call the integrity hotline and report that we think someone is recording us? What could they possibly do? If the guy is recording us and if the guy is smart he probably puts the videos on his computer and deletes them off his phone. I can't see them being able to do anything. And we can't go to management about this with nothing but just a very strong hunch. The accusation is absolutely massive. What, if anything, can we do about this? Relevant comments additional info if the company has an integrity hotline? Yes we do. We have an integrity hotline we could call. I'm not sure what they could do. On if OP is paranoid. We aren't being paranoid. He is a creepy guy in general. And the position his camera is in would clearly capture the entire stall. My guess is he gets off on the punt. Capturing guys when they are exposed is exciting for him. Voyeurism is a thing that excites some people. On if OP is homophobic. Nope not homophobic at all. And yes he uses Skype to see when we are away and follows us in there. Not sure if you read the whole story above but he did that exact thing just last week. Added a new hire who he had never talked to just so he could see that he is away from his desk. Update. So it's been a while since my original post so I figured I'd give a quick update. I took some advice I received on this post and decided we needed to take action. I couldn't stand having this guy be around anymore, receiving praise from his co-workers while none of them know what was truly happening. I talked with a few of my co-workers about it and we started looking into our options. Our company offers a hotline to report incidents just like this, completely anonymously. Finally, after a little bit of debate, one of us called the hotline and reported the incidents. We waited to see what would happen. Eventually the security team reached back out to him and asked him for more information. They said they are building a case and they need as much information as possible. After hearing this, the rest of us decided to report our cases to further aid in the building of the case. I remember the security officer telling me that things are going to move quickly. Well I guess in a big company they don't fuck around with this. Less than a month after the initial report was filed the creepy asshole was fired. The entire department was told to meet in a meeting room real quick for some news and management laid it on us that he was gone. He was a highly respected co-worker who was really good at his job. The news was met with shock, especially since some layoffs had occurred recently. I remember my heart absolutely racing when the news was being given. I couldn't believe that it was happening. I really didn't think some anonymous reports would lead to action so quickly. The creepy guy was friends with some of the women in our department, and he was texting them constantly saying that he was innocent. He quit pretty quickly once they weren't having any of what he was saying. The rumors of why he was fired spread really quickly around the office, but fizzled out faster than I was expecting. I really thought this would be going around the office for months, but after two weeks or so people stopped talking about it and things returned to normal. I really appreciate the advice on here. It was extremely helpful in my decision, and it worked out for the best. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to connect with each other in the comments below. Until next time, be kind, be curious, and I'll catch you in the next video.
Corner Stories signing off.